It's like they say in The Godfather. I keep trying to leave and they keep pulling me back in. That's what the Chinese state seems determined to do. Just keep pulling us back into the organ harvesting issue. But we bring some new tools into the fight this time. And maybe some new friends. To get the answers we need, it's going to happen. Because the governments of the West, maybe even the United Nations, will ultimately demand these answers. This is a follow-on to Bloody Harvest and the Slaughter, that we are looking at not 10,000 transplants per year in China, but something more like 60 to 100,000 transplants per year in China. Now this number is extremely upsetting, that we literally have no idea exactly where the sourcing of these organs comes from. Even if voluntary organ donations in China have gone up, they can't reach this level. This is live organ harvesting. Falun Gong in the main, but also Uyghurs, Tibetans, House Christians. These are the groups that have been targeted from the beginning, uh, and they continue to be targeted. We see no hospitals closing. We see no transplant centers uh, struggling. In fact, we see the opposite. We see construction programs, hundreds of hospitals, and it has become their bread and butter, an economic mainstay of their profession, is to keep this thing going. A death sentence, really, for the groups we're talking about. We're putting this report out without coming up with a casualty number. Now, we can't because we don't know. They're getting two organs out of a Falun Gong practitioner, one organ, three organs. It's very hard to get three organs, tissue matched, into new donors. It's very hard to do that all simultaneously, but it is possible. And for that reason, we can't come up with a clear number. What I can say is that the numbers we estimated previously for Kilgorn Matus, it was 2001 to 2005, 42,500 organs that uh, were unexplained. I made an estimate from 2000 to 2008 and said 65,000 Falun Gong practitioners have been harvested for their organs. At this point, those numbers look very low. The world really does need to wake up to what is going on here. This problem has not been solved. It's gotten worse. When I was writing my book, I believed that I was writing about history. It wasn't history, it never was. This is a current event. Uh, as much as I, I was hoping I'd sort of finish my book and move on to other subjects and other topics, I can't do that in good conscience, not with these findings. And so that's what this update is about. We hope that this, this report will lead to some policy changes in the West. Now, we're not expecting the Western nations to cut off economic relations with China, but we do expect that we will try to keep our own hands clean, that at least this is the minimum requirement of a Western society now. If we have people going to China to get organs, that needs to be recorded in Parliament, in the United States Congress, in the European Parliament. We should never get a question saying, well, how many of our citizens are going to China for an organ? There is no reason for medical confidentiality in this case. If somebody goes to China to get an organ at this point, in this day and age, chances are they are receiving it, they are getting an organ from a Falun Gong practitioner who was murdered on their behalf. This is critical. That's the first step. But the second step, and I think this follows very quickly from the first step, is once in our societies that we recognize this is actually happening and that our own citizens are complicit, the next step is to ban organ tourism to China. Israel did that first, Spain has followed, and just recently, Taiwan. And it was a very bold move on Taiwan's part, given the pressures from China. Now, the numbers get pretty hard to manage, so let me break it down in a pretty simple form. We're looking at about 700 hospitals, approximately. Only some of those hospitals are, are high volume transplant centers. Suppose we took the high transplant centers and we assumed that they're doing one transplant a day. That's 365 transplants a year. Now, we happen to know that there are doctors who do about 250 a year in China. Well, that's plausible. That means they're not working on weekends, that's all, and they're not working on their holidays. One transplant a day. And then we take the other hospitals and we cut it in half. Say we're, you're doing one every two days, or, or if you're a smaller center, uh, you're doing once a week, or twice a week at the most. Now, if we add those numbers up from these approximately 700 hospitals, what you will find is you get a number that's pretty striking. About 60,000 transplants per year in China. But there's a problem with that number. You know, we happen to know that there are some hospitals 
Beijing 301, a couple of military hospitals uh, and so forth. And especially uh, one of them pops out, Tianjin Central Hospital. Now that hospital happens to have 500 beds. These are 500 beds dedicated to transplant patients. Now they are claiming that they have an occupancy rate well over 100%. There's a 20 to 30 day stay reco recovery after your transplant. That means that these 500 beds represent about 5,000 transplants. 5,000 transplants from one single hospital. We start looking at some of these other big boys and we come up to much more extraordinary numbers. You're basically looking at something that's over 100,000 possibly 110,000 transplants a year. Everybody has a right to an opinion and everybody has a right to do their own investigation. I think people have a right to try to come up with what this means about fallen gone casualties. How many fallen gone have been harvested for their organs? Unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. But what we can say is these numbers are extraordinary and they leave the numbers that we came up with initially in the dust. So this is, this is no longer history. There is a feeling I sometimes get looking over this information and sifting through it that what we're looking at is one of the greatest cover-ups in human history. The Chinese state has determined that the best thing to do is to simply wipe out anyone in Falun Gong anyone in the Uyghur community, anyone in the Tibetan community who's been exposed to this. One final thing, which we do mention in our report, Falun Gong practitioners in, I believe, six provinces have now been given blood tests in their homes. Please come, knock on the door, and then administer a blood test, clearly set up for tissue matching. And this is taking place in their homes, not in the prison cells, not in the labor camps, not in the black jails. I really hate to use Holocaust references here, but what happens when you start registering people? Maybe it started out just as a way of some sort of social control. Maybe it started out as a scare tactic, but it led to something else. And in fact, looking at these reports from the hospitals, you have the feeling that you're looking at history repeating itself. To get the kind of answers, the really reliable answers, that's, that's the responsibility of China to provide those answers. And ultimately that is not gonna happen because of some video on the web or, or some social media movement. It's going to happen because the governments of the West and the United Nations demand these answers. And even then it's gonna be hard, very hard to get those answers and very hard to find justice. This is one of the central tests of our time. And if we can get anything out of a tragedy like this, it is simply that the human species has no choice but to look as closely as it can at, at, at this form of genocide. This is a new form of genocide. It's using the most respected members of society to implement it. And for these reasons, we, we can't avoid this any longer.